Registered Phenomena Code 360 Object Class Gamma Yellow Hazard Types Extra-Dimensional Hazard Teleportation Hazard Sentient Hazard Containment Protocols Due to the circumstantial nature of RPC-360, traditional containment methods have been deemed ineffective. Continuous expedition into the Pabe Anomaly Care Ashland, will be required in order to better understand the phenomenon surrounding RPC-360. At this time, containment efforts will instead focus on compiling relevant data discovered within the anomalous zone, including forensic evidence, which may prove beneficial in the ongoing investigation. A collaborative effort with these port authorities has been proposed to the Duke of the Mists, but official approval remains pending. Duke of the Mists is the title granted to the current official who presides over Thiedsport. Furthermore, any deceased individuals discovered within the realm of Kerr Ashlyn, who are believed to be victims of RPC-360-B, are to be transported to OL Site CA, Camp Cronach, for a preliminary inspection before being extradited to Site-007 for further evaluation. The epitaph scrolls found alongside the deceased are to be digitally transcribed and uploaded into the electronic archive at Site-007. RPC-360 is a designation given to the recurrent phenomenon during which an individual, hereby designated RPC-360-A, will be spontaneously transported to the realm of Kerr Ashland, before subsequently falling victim to a specter-like assailant, hereby designated RPC-360-B. To date. Authority assets had discovered a total of six deceased instances of RPC-360-A during routine visits to Thievesport. Forensic research into the identities of the deceased has revealed that they are all individuals who were officially documented as missing shortly before being discovered within Kerr Ashland. Additional evidence suggests that an individual residing beyond the boundaries of Kerr Ashland may be inadvertently transporting instances of RPC-360-A into the spatial anomaly through the use of written fanfiction scenarios. This theory is further supported by the fact that every instance of RPC-360-A encountered thus far had a scroll comprised of Cypress papyrus forcefully inserted into their esophagus upon initial discovery. A species of aquatic flowering plant belonging to the sedge family Cyperaceae these scrolls contain personalized messages and are written in a prose that is inconsistent with the dialogue style regularly seen with Randolph Gowring's work. At this time, there appears to be no viable method to subdue RPC-360-B, and all attempts at communicating with the entity have failed to yield palpable results. Interviews with the inhabitants of Thiesport suggest that RPC-360-B is an entity commonly known as a wraith. A wraith is an undead creature whose name originated in Scottish folklore, a type of ghost or spirit. Wraiths were traditionally said to be the embodiment of souls who are either on the verge of death or who have recently passed on. According to information provided by a native blacksmith, wraiths are susceptible to weapons forged from celestial orichalcum, a type of thaumaturgic alloy that can only be obtained from meteorites that land in Kerr Ashland. Due to the scarcity of such metals, it is currently impossible to test the validity of this claim. Per eyewitness testimony, manifestations of RPC-360-B will ignore any bystanders present in favor of RPC-360-A. Should RPC-360-A attempt to escape, RPC-360-B will continue to pursue them until it has fulfilled the task of terminating RPC-360-A. Once RPC-360-A is confirmed to be deceased, RPC-360-B will then proceed to vanish. Discovery RPC-360 first came to the authorities' attention during a diplomatic visit to the city-state of Thiesport. It was during exploration of Thiesport slums that Agent discovered the disemboweled remains of a middle-aged Caucasian male in an alleyway. The corpse had been stripped of clothing and local authorities were unable to identify the remains. 
The presence of this cadaver did not coincide with any of the plot points previously described by Randolph Gowring's narrative, and the handwritten scroll found with the cadaver made references to .NET, a website dedicated to sharing and critiquing works of fanfiction. This, in turn, led to Authority Assets launching a supplementary investigation into the identity of the deceased. Forensic analysis revealed that the remains belonged to one Morgan Starlington, an English professor who had been reported as missing since September 25, 2000. Five identical incidents have been documented since RPC-360's initial discovery. Please see Addendum 360-1 for an archived log of all known RPC-360 incidents. Addendum 360-1 Victim RPC-360-A Date missing Last known location Epitaph message Morgan Starlington RPC-360-A-1 September 25, 2000 Cleveland, Ohio The marked one was dead. A vengeful specter doomed to forever wander the accursed realm of complacent gods and treacherous demons. The remnant tatters of his reputation hung over his shoulders, a ragged hood that obscured his marred visage from the scornful gaze of a world undone. The cowardly scholar could feel death's frigid breath tickle at his neck with its imminent frost. There was a moment of placid silence, as if the world itself had stopped to mourn his incoming demise and then the marked one would claim its prize, the scholar's flesh torn asunder by a phantasmal fury. Suffice to say, he died like a bitch. Bro, fuck your critique. I wrote that in honor of Randolph Gowring. GTFO dot com and never come back. Miguel Demas, RPC 360A2, October 16, 2000, Madrid, Spain. Of all the stains that tarnished Steedsport's reputation, he was perhaps the worst. He worked as a street sweeper, a man tasked with keeping the city-state's community pristine and presentable. Every motion of his broom was filled with purpose, meticulous in his quest to clean up filth, blind to the fact that he himself was the true rubbish. And he did it all for free. No compensation. He was overweight. He reeked of piss and shit, and he met his end in the darkest alleyway of Thiesport, another victim to the Marked One's vengeance. Fuck off, Janny. Stop deleting my post. You let Harry Potter threads stay up for days, yet you delete the one Gowring thread. What the fuck? Jessica Sapp, RPC 360A3, October 30, 2000, Queensland, Australia. She walked with a sultry strut, beggars and noblemen alike caught in the coquettish trance of her swiveling hips as she trekked through the bustling streets of Thiesport. Yet, unbeknownst to the fools who clamored for her hand in marriage, the angelic dame was a common harlot, a street walker with little regard for the justice and goodwill of her fellow man. She simply came and went as she pleased, swindling an entire community of its dignity, that is, until she encountered justice in its most tangible form. The marked one simply smiled as he tore into her flesh. Nobody cares about your crappy cosplay photos. This website is for writers, not for attention whores. Kill yourself. Robin Chu, RPC 360A4, December 11, 2000, Los Angeles, California. The marked one was cornered. He could feel the abrasive roughness of cobblestone brick brushing against its backside. There was nowhere to run, a true dead end. His foe had seemingly outsmarted him. The brave watchman brandished his rapier valiantly. Then, in the blink of an eye, it was over. The watchman was dead. A mangled puddle of bloodied pulp. The marked one wins again. You're an idiot, my guy. Just because I sent an angry DM to other users on this site doesn't mean I'm responsible for them suddenly disappearing. Maybe they just realized I was right. You mods pissed me off. Get a real job. Margot Chu, RPC 360A5, December 24, 2000, Los Angeles, California. The Watchman's widow was delirious in her quest to slay the marked one, 
driven by an insatiable vengeance that burned beneath her bosom like a fermenting bile. Her stare was cold, yet flickered with the defiant embers of fury. As the marked one stared into her eyes, he could only see a reflection of his own hateful spirit. He could not allow her to escape, not after she had threatened to return with an army. She would soon join her husband. Look, lady, I'm just a writer. I joined .net in hopes of meeting other fans of Gowring's books. Call the cops, I don't care. I had nothing to do with your husband vanishing. But here's an idea. Let's test his theory. If you fuck off too, maybe I'll start believing. Percival Wright RPC 360A6 January 10, 2000 El Paso, Texas It's all true. I can't believe it. I'm a monster. I can't do this anymore. Following the appearance of RPC 360A6, MST X Ray 6 Annullifiers was able to locate the .NET account affiliated with the author of the epitaph. This allowed authority assets to track down the POI's physical address through the use of a related IP address. On January 29, 2000, and a raid was successfully conducted at the apartment complex in San Antonio, Texas. But upon entry, it was discovered that the unit had been abandoned for some time. The website account affiliated with the POI has since then become inactive, and no new leads have emerged. Following this incident, MST X-Ray 6 Annullifiers has been placed in interim standby and is to monitor all activity on .NET until 2000.